another another devastating loss for the Badgers. We've got to talk about this, Justin. We've got so much to get into today to talk about basketball. Where are we on guard? I am beginning to change my tune a little bit on guard. I've done a lot of reflection, and boy, I've got a lot to say about it. We're going to talk about Isaac Grando, too. What a, what a combine that guy had. All right, Sunday night, you were live with a Bucky Report. I told Welcome to the Bucky Report, your destination for all things Wisconsin Badgers. Authentic takes. Oh, my God. Game analysis. Touchdown, Badgers. Ring one up. And discussion from the fan perspective. Woo-hoo! Thanks for joining us. And on Wisconsin. Welcome into the Bucky Report. We are your hosts, Rajiv and Justin, back together on a Sunday evening to talk about all things Wisconsin Badgers football and basketball. Oh, boy, Justin. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> we are at the Bucky Report on Twitter, YouTube, and wherever you can get your podcast. If you like what we're doing, hit the subscribe button, hit the notify bell, so you know when we make new content. Um, well, yesterday was pretty rough. Um, the Badgers lost another one. We're now two and seven of our in our last nine games. Illinois lost to a better team. They're pretty good, obviously, uh, but there's a lot to pick apart there. I was on the reaction show on Locked on Badgers with Ryan yesterday. You were not. I am dying to hear your take on this because I know that you have a lot of opinions, and I'm going to tell you guys right now. We're going we're gonna to get into the gray guard thing a little more, and we've had this discussion before on the show. We've had the discussion for about a year on Locked on Badgers, and I feel like I'm beginning to move a little bit. <clears throat> Because my frustration level is growing, and it is growing rapidly, my friend. I'm really not happy with what I'm seeing, and I've had a lot of time just in the last 24 hours to just think about this and stew on it, and it's an upsetting situation for me. We're going to get into the Illinois loss. We're going to talk player ratings today. We're going to have the guard discussion, and we also are going to talk about Isaac Arendo having a really killer combine. Go Isaac Arendo. Justin, how are you, my friend? I mean, are you just are you still pissed off about yesterday? I'm, I I told you I'm apathetic. Like I've gotten to the point where I've I've made my decision on this. Like I I do not think that. Listen, Dark Ray, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up here real quick. First off, we'll get David Thiering's in it. You're frustrated from David Thiering. You think your frustration is bad now, Rajiv? Lose Thursday against Rutgers, and the heat is going to ex- escalate by three levels. I'm following this up with Dark Ray. We were frauds this whole time. We weren't frauds this whole time. This team we is not, not playing frauds. their talent right. level. They are not playing their talent level, but they are not being co- well coached right now either. Um, we effectively are doing nothing. We're just going down with the ship in terms of our attitude of how we're handling things. And this is kind of what's been going on this entire season with what my problem has been. It seems like guard comes in with a really good – and it's not even just game to game. He comes into the season with a really good idea of how to start the season and what he wants to do from a philosophy standpoint. And then teams adjust to the team. And then he just kind of stands there and be like, I need to do something again. I need to adjust to this. And it it comes across like, I don't know how, what to do when my first option one fails. And it's, I sit there and I'm like, it's not this complicated. You, You can't tell me. Coming into the season, you did not have an idea in your head of what you were going to do when this first option didn't work. There has to be something that you thought about for a contingency should something not work. And this happens the same way with his rotations. If somebody's getting chewed up, what is your contingency? You know, we have somebody that's playing really poorly on defense. What do you do? Do you just sit there and continue to let it just get eaten up or do you try something different? And he has made a concerted effort to not do that this entire season. And at that point, if you're not playing well, what do you expect to change? Like if they already figured out how to attack you and you know that it's working and they're effective in doing that, do you just expect your guy to be like double down and play harder? Because if he's giving you your best right off the bat, you can't expect him to go up a level unless you're just expecting him to get lucky. And that's ridiculous to just hope, like, <laughs> Burgess Meredith, and I'll, I'll say it from Grumpy Old Men, you can hope in one hand and crap in the other and see which one gets filled first. And right now, he's got a pile in a hand right now that is not not getting better. It's just frustrating. Oh, man. So, yes, 91-83. We lose to Illinois at home yesterday. 
Tyler Wall, I thought, had a really good game. Yes, I know. I put it on Twitter during the game yesterday, and I got a lot of uh, hate mail back saying, have you seen him play defense? I, I get that, okay? I understand that, Dom that Marcus Damask literally abused him. <clears throat> However, without Tyler Wall, we lose that game by 30 points, okay? Tyler Wall was our only offensive outlet that we that could do anything in that game yesterday. I do. He's my player of the game for sure. I just feel like he absolutely played his butt off. And I almost wish we would shot more. I mean, I, he could have had he could have had 31 just like Damask if he just kept shooting. And I think we kind of got away from him. I, at, I, at key I thought points. this game had some, some correlation to the Arizona game. And that was that we – they came out wanting to run, and especially in the second half, and we were just like, we can play your game. And we, we can't play that game with Illinois. The, the, the way this game should have played out is we should have tried to slow them down and grind them a little bit and just out-execute them. Play them in the half court and make Illinois play really well in the half court. And this team just it, – it wants to be better than what it is, like the talent level is. It's probably good enough offensively that it's a problem, meaning like what we did earlier in the season when they played to that level and they realized that they could go out there and just torch teams at times. We're not playing to that level anymore. And they still have this attitude where they're like, we can go head to head. If you want it, we can take your best punch and we can still play better than you. And that's not happening. Like we haven't played that level of offense now in what a month and a half. It's been a long time. It's been a really long time, and we had we had such a good start to this season, and it's just so frustrating to see what happened. Getting back to this game specifically, Justin, like obviously Wall. I'm assuming Wall is your was your top guy as well. Like he clearly was our best player yesterday. Um, you know, let's talk about the defense a little bit. Obviously, we gave up 91 points, and we gave up. A, it's kind of weird. Like at one point during the first half, I even was texting you. I was like, "Ah, oh, it's nice. We're actually playing better defense," and we still gave up 52 points in the second half. I mean, we still gave 52. up 39 points at the half. So we did. We gave up our defense points. was not that good. It was, but I thought it was better. I thought the intensity, it, it, the effort, yeah, was the better. effort was better. Right, right, now we gave, up, we gave up. We gave up. Illinois is a really points. talented team. Yeah, I mean, Illinois shot 9 of 16 from 3. Their field goal percentage was um, 50, 51.8%. Like, they, they they shot really well. They they have a lot of athletes, right? They've got Hawkins. They've got Shannon, who shouldn't be playing, but whatever. They've got Damask, who's just just abused Tyler Wall. Gary Air, um, Danger. They've got, they've got a lot of people on their team that are just good. And I felt like throughout the time, the second half, I texted you this, and I was like, we can win this game, but it's going to take a really concerted effort to find ways to get stops late in the game. But they just have the firepower. I watched their game the other night against Minnesota. Same thing happened. They went they were minutes. They, they went Minnesota. minutes without having an empty possession, like a whole yeah. swath of minutes. The same thing happened again in this game. They either get fouled or they make buckets. They are extremely good at what they do. That being said, you can't give up 91 points, okay? I don't really know where this has gone on and where where it's gone wrong, what is going on with their defense. I think the effort was better this game, but it always comes back to adjustments are never made, and that's where we're going to get into the guard discussion after a little bit, but what other takes of the Illinois game? What upset you the most about the Illinois game? Do you take any positives? Because we did play a little better, Justin. We did play a little better in this game. You have, you have, to, you have to give them credit a little bit. I think offensively they were better, but I just don't think it matters anymore at this point. Like, what a. I still am of the mindset. I, I would not shock me to see us trip up against Rutgers now because no. we're, we've developed bad habits. I, we I have to think, believe. We have to I'm be able to believe that it's not going to happen, but <laughs> I, we've played poorly enough now that I'm to the point where I'm like, I don't expect us to come out and just set the world afire. And if they play defense to the level that they're capable of, of, they have something they can hang their hat on. I don't think we do right now. It's possible we play better against them. I don't think that Crowell is going to be exceptional against their center. And I think that that's a problem because it was a problem in this game. Him not being able to do anything is an issue. And it's, it's not just him, you know, not being on the court. It's him not being effective even when he is on the court. And that's that's a problem for this basketball team. You, we can't play four on five. You need you need to at least try to to match somewhat what the guy across from you is doing. And whether that's defensively or offensively or rebounding, whatever. And there's too many games where we we mm. lose that something in that regard to the guy across. Yeah. I just, 
Oh, oh, go ahead. I, I just think that at this point I look at it and I'm like, if we don't shoot well against Rutgers, I think we're going to lose that game. It may be an know. absolute rock fight, but I think they're capable of making us uncomfortable. And if we don't shoot well, it could be a problem. If we lose against Ruck, well, first of all, I think we'll shoot okay because we do we do tend to shoot better at home, right? We're, we we mean obviously just as evidenced by the Illinois game, we will play better now. Illinois' defense is not really that great, but it doesn't really matter because they score ninety points a game, like what we were doing early in the year, right? We were just out scoring people. Illinois does that every game. Um, <clears throat> Rutgers does have a better defense. Now, Rutgers lost on the road to Nebraska today. Uh, Nebraska took over our spot in the the fourth, fifth spot. I think, right now, I think we're like the sixth seed in the in the tournament. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we fall where we've fallen from. It's oh my goodness. All right, let's get some comments in here. Um, Phil says if we get an eight nine seed and lose in the first round, does guard officially land on the hot seat? Phil, we're going to get into that um, in our next segment, and there's a lot to talk about. Tyler says Crowell only had four points. Ryan is smoking something and thinking he's underrated. <laughs> get Zach Bartz. Guard seems to start seasons hot. The teams figure out figure him out late. He can't adjust and doesn't have the bench depth to make the necessary adjustments, a tale as old as time. Yeah, I mean, that's that's true. David Thering, this team thinks it can win a track meet every game. It may have worked in the past, but teams have figured Wisconsin out. Let's stop here and talk about this a little bit, Justin. So, yes, the beginning of the season, <clears throat> we did, in a sense, like just we, we were outscoring people. We could do what we need to do. We were covering up some defensive issues. And, said, and, and David says teams have figured us out. I don't necessarily think they figured us out as much as we're just not playing as good as offense as we used to. And for some reason, which is unlike any Wisconsin team that we've ever seen in our fandom, we, we just can't manufacture any kind of a stop ever. And that is really frustrating. So I think that that, because the defense has been sort of been much maligned and getting a lot of attention, it's affecting us offensively. Because now the guys are pushing so hard offensively because they have to. They know they've got to outscore teams that the only thing they can do is try to just win a track meet like this. And it's really it, it's the, 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 the turn that has been taken in this season is shocking. And it's obviously the defense, but the offense can't outscore people. We're not surprising people. Do you think we've been figured out? Do you think it's a, a, um, a fatigue issue? What do you think about David's comment here? Well, I mean, we're playing down on our rotation, not having McGee and Blackwell being out for a prolonged period has put some wear and tear on some of these guys that they we would we would like to have avoided. Like Chucky has played so many minutes at this point. Blackwell being out really put some of the store in uh Klesmet in a rough spot. And for whatever reason, we're just we don't we're not gonna play Connor. So I look at it this way to an extent. You have to look at guard, and he has to take a look in the mirror and say, if if you don't think any of these guys are good enough to play, that's kind of an indictment on you, that you feel like you have to basically run your starters to death to be able to compete in these games. Like, you've done an app, that poor of a job that you basically have to kill these guys in order to compete. And I, I don't know what you could say with regards to that. I think they are tired, but I don't think they're so tired that they shouldn't be winning these games. I think a lot of it to me, it's mostly defense, to be honest. I, I don't think offensively we've really played that poorly. We have regressed to the mean a little bit, but I think we were probably out executing things. Like I don't I, I don't want to say teams have figured us out, but they've figured out how to be more effective defensively against us than what they were earlier in the season. And I just don't think that we have the athletic advantages in order to counter that as much which is where we've kind of lost it a little bit. Defensively, we're just not good. It's yeah. probably the worst defensive Wisconsin team Ugh. I can remember. I don't, I don't even, what, the 90s? It's. I mean, it's definitely, I mean, since I've been a fan, which is 1999, which is when I got to, I, my, my freshman year in Madison was 99. Since then, we've 100%, this is the worst defensive team we've had. I mean, there's no question. So before... I think Van before Gundy that, coach, right? It's like we're talking yeah. back that far. I mean, and and that's that's Wisconsin that I don't even know. Like, that's how far back it is because I've, I'm better around for about 25 years. David Thering, Rajiv, you've been 0 for 2 lately in your bets for Wisconsin and Vegas. I would tread lightly in thinking Rutgers game is a lock. Yeah, you're right, David. I, I, I have to say that. I mean, that's I've just been, I've been wrong about this. Because I, I mean, obviously, it's my optimism, right? That's getting in the way of the realism, the realistic view of what's happening with this team. 
All right, all right, let's do some player ratings. Let's kind of break this down a little bit more and talk about player ratings and coaches. Um, we'll start with Chucky Hepburn. We'll go right down the list. We're going to go a starting five plus Black Blackwell. No one else really played anything yeah, other there's than Blackwell. No point grading so we'll, we'll go. So we'll go six, and then we're going to give guard a grade two out of ten. Um, so I've done mine. I haven't You're posted first on that one because I'm very curious to see what your score is. So, I know. So I will. Um, so I, I will go first um, on some of these, but I will. Uh, I will. Po- I haven't posted on Twitter yet because I wanted to to put them live on the show. So listen, I think that the two players that had a solid game yesterday were Chucky Heppard and Tyler Wall. I like the way they played. Um, so their their grades are going to be higher for me because I, I think most people are not. But I give Chucky Heppard a seven um, because look, I think he played well. He he know he's actually scoring offensively. He's taking over when he needs to. He's being very similar to what he was last year. You know, he's a guard that, yeah, he doesn't always make the greatest shot. And he's not the best offensive guy, but he does what he has to do. And if you put him and Wall together, I think you have a pretty solid combo there. I do think the team played better yesterday than it had. I know we lost, but it wasn't that bad of a performance. Illinois is a really good team. I give Chucky Hepburn a seven. Where are you at on Chuck? I think that's probably about right. I mean, Chucky hasn't played bad this season he's been too passive at times i think he has struggled to stop penetration to an extent but i don't think that's he's the only person that struggled with that um he's i would say he's one of the better point guards in the big 10 but i also think that the big 10 is not exactly murderer's row of point guards um he's been good he hasn't been great you know he's been i think he was I, i i like him as a player better this year than i did last year i just think that in terms of being able to watch him play, he fits a cohesive offensive scheme so much better this year. He, I haven't seen the step back threes and stuff like that as much. And he's been much better at getting downhill and going towards the rim. Now, sometimes he doesn't have an idea when he's doing that, but I think that he's been better. And I think that it has helped this team to be better offensively. I mean, <clears throat> listen, we can argue what we want about what the offense is right now it's miles ahead of what it was last year. It's not even close. Yeah. And some of that store, but some of it's just, we're better. Chucky did shoot five and nine from the field, two of four from three points, um, three, five from the free throw line had three assists, two turnovers, um, three steals as well. 15 points. All right. Max Klesman, give me a number for max yesterday. I, I think he's a seven two. good offensively, oh. not great defensively. He was a, big actually, over- I gave him a six. I gave him a six because I thought defensively he really he couldn't do anything to really affect the game defensively. So for me, he was a six. He's been that um, way most of the season, though. He's been underwhelming defensively compared to last year. Especially compared, yeah, last year, like the I was almost like, but see, with him, it really is an effort thing because we know he's a, he can be a good defender. Like you can't tell me that he's not a good defender. He's shown it. Like he has it. So if he's not doing it this year, it must just be an effort thing, which is which is frustrating. All right, uh, AJ Store. I'm giving AJ Store a five. I um, <laughs> like AJ Store was four of twelve yesterday. I'm sorry. I understand that AJ Store brings athleticism, and but here's my thing: he goes to the hoop. Okay, either he's like, if he can't get fouled, I'm worried that he's not going to finish. Every time he takes a shot, I don't really have confidence that he's going to make it. Every time he drives the lane, I don't have confidence that he's going to finish. Frankly, I'm losing confidence in his ability to even get fouled. So. I don't really like what I'm seeing from him. Defensively, he's pretty, pretty much a non-existent factor. He's athletic. He has speed. He has drive. Like the way he plays is great, and it's a nice thing to have on our team. But we're we're now twenty some games into the season. <clears throat> you need to be more effective offensively. His efficiency numbers are atrocious offensively. Four of twelve yesterday. Oh, one from three. He had thirteen points. He's a five for me, Justin. Yeah, I think that's valid. I mean, he's not a good defender. He's, he's It's an effort thing for sure with him because athletically, I think he at least has the tools to be an above average defender in college. I don't think he's, if he does find a way to get to the NBA, I don't see it there. Um, there's just some things with him, much like I said with Chucky, that he he needs to have an idea when he's going to the rim. It, Store needs to have an idea when he's attacking because sometimes he's just like, screw it, I'm just going with reckless abandon hoping that they'll bail me out with a foul. He doesn't finish very well through contact. And that's a big part of the problem right now is that teams aren't afraid to, to just get in his way. And I don't think that he's necessarily great at, 
he's not he's not getting the fouls that he was getting earlier in the year. Uh, he's still getting the line more than most of the guys in our team, but I just don't think that we're great from that regard in that regard in general. Um, he's a guy who needs growth. I don't want to get too down on him. I mean, he has only a, a true sophomore at this point. Yeah, he has a, he a bright future still yeah. for sure. He's 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 a true sophomore in his first year in our program, and I think he learned exactly zero from Rick Patino playing in St. John's. So um, I, I think a five is valid. I don't think he was good in this game. I think that he's when when I talk about guys who want to get up for a track meet, he is the prime example of the guys on this team. That's like when the other team wants to get out and run, he wants to get out and run with them and play back the other way. And you can't do that. Like this team is not, this is not like a Carolina team. Like we're going to go out there and be like, oh, we can play any way we want. We're just as athletic as any team that we're playing. Wisconsin can't do that with Illinois. This is a game where you have to be smarter than them. Yeah. You have to let them run themselves out of the game, basically. John Burns says, you guys are giving too much emphasis to offense. Max is a three on D and a six on offense. Ryan says that's a rough matchup for him. Uh, look, I think that um, some of the some of the matchups defensively yesterday were crazy. The fact that Max Klesmet was consistently guarding uh, Hawkins, like who's just way more athletic, way taller. I mean, that's that's yeah. tough. It's tough. We the had fact to play that he didn't have right thirty here. points, by the way. Given that, like, why are you not posting him every time down? Yeah, that's what I would do every single time. You have a six so, nine guy on a six three guy. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Wall for me, look, I'm going to talk about Tyler Wall for a second. I gave him an eight, and I know that a lot of people don't think that he play, played really bad defense. I I understand that, that Damask was abusing him yesterday, and the same thing happened over and over. The bottom line is Damask is a good player. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. You're literally playing one-on-one, -on -one, and Damask was hitting fadeaways. He was hitting layups. He was doing anything he wanted to Wall, and you put that – I'm not putting that on Wall. I'm putting that on great guard. You need to make adjustments, okay? I understand <clears> – <throat> That if you double Damas, like you're you're letting four other guys who are very athletic get the ball and and have open shots. I understand that, but something has to change. So I'm not putting that entirely on Wall. Did he have a great defense yesterday? No, but some of the for the most part, it wasn't horrible. Like yes, there were times where Damas was just doing whatever he wanted, and I understand that. And it was late in the game, which is why I'm so upset about Guard not making adjustments because that's when the game was on the line. You knew he was literally getting anything yeah, I, he wanted. If it was I had me, 30 I know points. Don't out. let him. Don't let him continue doing that. But he's but got Tyler Wall. Wall been on. But Tyler Wall played incredibly on the offensive side of the ball. Absolutely amazing. I wish we could have gone to him more. He was aggressive. He played with heart. He took over. He knew that he was frankly the only guy that was doing anything. I give Tyler Wall an eight, and I was very impressed with him. Yes, David Thering. I just see your comment up there. He says, an eight. You're giving Wall an eight in this game after he was defensive performance. I want to hear what numbers you give separately for offense and defense for Wall. Okay, fair enough. I will do that. Uh, then in that case, I'm giving him a 10 offensively, and I'm giving him a five defensively. That's what I would say, David, because I think, it, I think what he did was really important. We would got we would have been absolutely smoked in this game if it wasn't for Tyler Wall. Absolutely smoked. And I don't think that's really a debatable point for me. I think Tyler Wall had a great game. I want to give him a lot of credit. I give him an eight. Your thoughts, sir? I give him a seven. And I'm and that's simply the defense. I'm I'm waiting a little bit more. I think you're right on him offensively. I think I think you're right that we probably aren't in this game if he's not effective. And defensively, he he definitely left you wanting, which is unfortunate, but so did everyone else on the roster. So it's it's hard not to. I mean, you give get credit to Damas. Give credit to Damas. Damas played great. Like that's oh, just a, a guy player. that was in his own. Ah, whatever. All right, Stephen Crow. Oh, this would be fun. Stephen Crow, what's your number for Stephen Crow? two he's he's a three for me so we're your best ability well your best ability is availability and you played 14 minutes in a game where they badly needed you to be an effective player and to hold down the paint you couldn't do it and you've you've had way too many games this season where you haven't been able to do it it is what yeah. it is at this point yeah, for me it was a three. I mean, I, look, it's just it's not good enough, and and we've we've talked about him a lot. I don't know. I don't want to belabor this. I think that look, we he obviously had foul trouble. I think that his fourth foul was really frustrating for me. Um, Ryan was saying yesterday that he did think it was a good call or it was a weak call, and I understand that. But 
you can't reach in like that. There was no, he had no business picking up that fourth foul and it basically eliminated him from the game way too early. And that's just not acceptable to me mentally for me. That's really like, I felt like Steven Crow wasn't checked in yesterday. He was checked out mentally. Um, and, and, you know, like maybe it was, was just because, yes, yes. Because I think he would, he had a, there were a lot of bigs out there. He was, he was, in a, he knew going into that game that he wasn't really going to be able to stop those guys. And it showed in his face. It showed in his action. Like that's why I give Tyler wall so much credit because wall could have also like kind of went into that shell a little bit, but he didn't, he fought as hard as he could. And I just feel like, you know, crouch didn't. And yeah, crowd to me is, is a three, um, get some comments in here, Ryan. It's a five on wall. You can't score 20. You should give up 30 ish. In my opinion, we consider him a good defensive player. Then that effort isn't good enough. I disagree, Ryan. I do. I, I just feel like we are nowhere near in this game. In fact, as we were we literally say on his show that he thought Wall, Wall played well. I think he did. Some yeah, of the, some I, of I, the I definitely defensive did. stuff I, was was overrated. Wasn't I his just, fault. I just feel like you can't like we were in this game. I know that in the in the end we lost by eight and you know we went down ten with two minutes to go, but it wasn't really out of the question for most of the game. Had we won this game, I don't think people would be giving Wall a low as low scores as they might, they might. And yes, I'm consider me the optimist. I, I am, I understand that. Uh, but for me, I don't really feel like Wall had uh that bad of a game. Easton Parks, Crow is a two or less. I I understand that. Um, Mikey Crowell and foul trouble every game. Soft player. I, I, Justin, I think you agree that there's definitely a toughness issue here. I think we we all agree to that. It's part of it. He's not a great fit for this. I, he's a stiff, like athletically, he's probably our least athletic center that we've had outside of vote. And vote was a backup. Like he's, we haven't had a, a center that was as limited, limited as as athletically as what we have in Crowell. The, the past several seasons in a long time. Yeah. We got an Illini fan in here. Sonny Verma, host of the Illini cast and the Big Ten show. Check out his work if you like, especially the Big Ten show. I know you're not going to listen to the Illini cast if you're listening. He's good. But, I, I've, um, I was, I've been watching him most of the season. Damask can yeah. play. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Illini fan checking in. Damask has done this against a few teams now. This was probably his best game. Wall did what he could, but I think guard did not, did not, didn't help him out at all. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty clear. He didn't help him out. Thanks, Sonny, for, for joining the show. Um, all right, let's go John Blackwell. Uh, we're going to do him. For, for Blackwell, for me, I, I'm going to give him a five. I, I, I was just kind of like, hot. nothing really excited me about him. I think there were times and minutes that I thought he played really well, but nothing really like jumped off the page. And I, I know he's a freshman, but I feel like this late, in the, this late in the season, I wanted to see a little bit more out of him. He got five fouls. You know, like I, I wanted to give him a six maybe, but I just, to me, it was very neutral. It was a very neutral game for, for, for Blackwell for me. Yeah. Other than the big three, not much in this game. I, I think that he belonged on the court. Like if, if there was somebody I'd throw at the mask, he's probably the guy I would do it rather than wall. Cause I just think athletically from a strength and athleticism standpoint, it's a better fit, but he's in foul trouble. What are you going to do? I mean, there's not a lot you can really do to counter that. Yeah. Uh, give me a guard score, my friend. Greg guard coach. This should be into this should be interesting and, and put them in the comments here. I'm going to flash up ones that I see, but I, what, what's your score out of 10 for Greg Garden yesterday's game? Honestly, I, I expected us to lose the game, but he's showing the same things that he's shown all season long. So I put him probably at four. Like I, it's consistently bad for me. And from the standpoint of how I watch him, like every game is the same. You look for him to counter whatever's going on out there, and it's like he the, we just don't do anything. It's it's so frustrating when you watch somebody carve you up, and it's just like, okay, so we're just going to continue to single up on him and just let it play out. Okay, we're we're yeah. not going to we're not going to check a team that's suddenly getting hot or on a run and out and running on us by throwing a zone at him for two possessions just to make them think more. Nope. And this this is this will lead us into our the next point of our discussion here today. I'm going to give him a two. I was really disappointed in guard yesterday. Really disappointed because again, I think that certainly the Damas situation. You're not doing anything to change. They just, I mean, they can do whatever they want, whenever they want. And I think Underwood, by the way, has done a fantastic job. I was talking to Sonny uh, from the Illini cast yesterday. I mean, he Illini fans love what Underwood is doing, and he brought in a new offense. 
you know, he's he's looking at these situations. He's looking at teams that they're playing and he is making adjustments for the team that they're playing. Right. And our coach doesn't seem to do that. And I know that it, Illinois is a good team <clears throat> and we were in the game. I don't think we went to wall enough. I think that every single time I felt like we were in the game, we were trying to get in the game. We screwed up. We did something bad. I don't like his rotations. I don't like, didn't like the way that he pulls people when he should keep them on the court. I, everything about it yesterday. I was really disappointed. I give guard a two. Let's lead this into our next discussion. Well, Ryan, before, Ryan's before we do that, I, I do want to throw one yeah. thing on there. And that's that Ryan has talked about this before too. And a lot of times and what Underwood did is exactly what you expect a good coach to do which is if you have mismatches, exploit them. Go out there, and if you see somebody who's lined up on somebody who they should be, they instantly attack. It happens in the NBA constantly where coaches see you get the backup point guard on a power forward, and it's like, all right, we're posting now, and it's instant. Guard has never been good at that. He always wants to run a system more than actually looking for ways to exploit things, and it's the biggest thing that frustrates me from an offensive standpoint. He refuses to put himself in positions where if somebody gets a bat, a good matchup that he works to get to that, that person the ball. And what ends up happening, we end up getting in some rough possessions because of it. Now, you're kind of letting the other team off the hook when you do that. And he's got to do a better job of noticing that and calling it out so his guys can exploit it. Well said. Well said. And that's that's definitely a frustration. I'm going to put Ryan's coming up here, which is going to lead us into our guard discussion. He says a two feels harsh for a game that you've said they played pretty well in. If the game was a two, what is the Michigan IU Rutgers <laughs> game? Fair point, Ryan. That's a fair point. And I'll tell you what. So Ryan and I were we were talking on the on, on Locked On Badgers yesterday. And after the show, he was he was kind of he was kind of probing me a little bit about what I felt about guard and like, you know, you don't like his rotations, you don't like this. Like, do you really do you really like guard? And I have been thinking about this, Justin, for the last 24 hours. It has been racking my brain because I have been saying for, for now almost two years that I do think Greg Guard should be the coach. I don't think he should go. And I felt like, you know, but then as I begin to think about every single game that happened this year and my frustration level with the team, my frustration level with defense and rotations and development of players when you see the Bo Reiner and you see this. And I I am not, I do not believe in firing coaches midseason. I definitely don't. I think that you cannot judge a season also until the season is over. Okay. So I'm not gonna say, yes, he should be fired, but I have really moved definitely. I'm not, I'm the bow, the bow dragon, the the JB train. I'm not on that train yet. But I absolutely am close. I'm really close. I'm as close as I've ever been to no longer wanting Gray Guard as the coach because I am now after after Ryan and I had our conversation yesterday, and literally for the for the last day, I've been thinking about this. Like I don't actually know if he is the guy that can actually take us forward. I yes, I've said he has a high floor, and I he is a high floor guy. I mean, look at look at his amazing uh, record in the Big Ten, getting to 100 wins faster than hardly anybody other than the the five great coaches. But when you compare what we were before and what we are now and what we're looking at in the future and everything the football program has done, everything that the hockey program has done, is Gray Guard really the guy to take us to the next level? Probably not. And the fact that I can I'm gonna I'll answer have, that emphatically. He, he definitely <laughs> no. is not. He the fact that I continuously have these questions in about in-game, in-game coaches, like how many times have we talked about the end of games and how he manages them? And and the plays that he runs and the lack of of like what you just said, finding exploiting a mismatch. Like, do there's it's an endless list that frankly I've been defending him for a long time and just saying, look, the guy is gonna get us to the tournament. We're gonna be competing for big tens. But I I feel like I'm reaching the end of my limit here, Justin. I, I don't really know how much longer I can be on this hill of Gray Guard is our guy. I, I know I don't think he should be fired right now, but I will tell you this. After the end of this season, you and I are going to have the discussion, and and I'm I'm, I'm going to make make sort of my take, if you will, because I'm very very unhappy with what I'm seeing, and I just feel like I need to be more realistic with myself. I need to be more self reflective about the fact that I get I com constantly complain about everything that I'm seeing on the basketball court, but yet here I am saying that Gray Gar should stay. Why do I keep saying that, man? Like I I, I don't. I think I'm really getting close. I just, 
it's frustrating. I'm really, really frustrated with everything I'm seeing from him, and I don't see it changing. And I think that's the key. I don't see it changing. I said last year we needed to improve, and we did improve. We did improve from last year. You know, like Blackwell's been a good addition store. He can make, he can add some things in the portal this year. Free tags coming in next year. Like we have, we can still go up, but is it ever going to be good enough? So we, we've kind of gone back and forth with Ryan on this a little bit in terms of the the difference between Chris and, and guard. And I think that from a personnel standpoint, you can argue that guard is a little bit more open-minded and potentially with offensive scheme to an extent. I think there is some big similarities, though, in terms of defensive stubbornness that you see with him, that he thinks that – he is right and his way is right. And he refuses to outright to, to work against it. And I think that that's one of the problems I I'm, I'm done. I mean, Ryan and I, after you guys got done, I said to him, it's on a text out. I go, if we lose out, do you think, do you think he's gone? And Ryan said, yeah, I think he is. I'm like, you can't go that long playing that poorly. And not be and and have them be kept on, because effectively at that point we would end the season. Like you're thinking, it, if you look at it, if, if we lose out, we end the season. We would two be and what nine. Eight, eighteen and fourteen in the regular season, right? And then you have a, a the Big Ten tournament, eighteen and fifteen. And then if you somehow still stumble into the the we will. NCAA tournament, you're eighteen and sixteen if you lose in the first round. And it's going to be a coin flip game if we're eight and nine seed. It just is. And I don't think that this team plays well enough away from home to say that they're going to win a game, especially if we get a bad matchup. Because there are definitely teams that have played poorly this season that are probably more physically talented than us. And if we get a bad matchup, we definitely could lose. And if that happens, I do think he's gone. That would be two back-to-back seasons. Like you could make you could make the legitimate argument if we finish 18 and 15 going into the tourney that we do not belong in the tournament. I don't care how many quad one wins we have. Like at some point, the committee has to look at it and be like, "You've been awful for the second half of the season. Why are we putting you in? We know you're going to lose. Like, are you just banking on the fact that they'll somehow figure it out and get in a hot streak going in the end in the tournament? It could happen. I wouldn't bet on it. What are the odds? Like, ten percent that they suddenly just figure something out and start playing better? I would say it's much more likely that they just stumble and just completely lose confidence, which could still happen yet." We lose to Rutgers. I think there's a it's a better than fifty percent chance they lose out. Well, I mean, we're obviously losing to Purdue, so we're going to lose out as on the regular season. The Big Ten tournament. I would like to think that we could win a game there, but who knows? It's not a home game, though. It's going to be you're a, right. You're right. It's, it's in Minnesota. I mean, or wherever the championship is this it's, year, it's Minnesota this year. Uh, a couple comments I want to put up here. Uh, John Burns for Wisconsin to compete at a national level, they need a coach <clears throat> that can recruit in state, develop talent. And coach in game guard is 0 for three. Tyler Schreiber says McIntosh doesn't mess around. Guard isn't his guy. He will make a move if he feels like he needs to. And McIntosh, I trust. Let's talk about McIntosh. Um, do you think that Greg Guard is on the hot seat right now? Yeah, I do. I think there's been discussions. I don't know what how hot, but I'm sure there's been discussions that this is not good enough. You can't go seven and nine. I don't care if you're at, you know, Minnesota. If you if you go lose seven of nine, they're going to be looking at it and be like, we need to do better than this. And you can only get by on, you know, showing progress for so long. You need to be competitive. And I don't care even if the games look okay from a visual standpoint. It's a loss is a loss. Like moral victories, this is that's not what we do at Wisconsin. I, I realize he's not Bo Ryan. I'm not asking him to be Bo Ryan, but I do expect us to have a good season. And I, I one of the things I brought up you know, I've been talking to people about this was how many seasons has guard had less than less than double digit losses in his time at Wisconsin as a head coach. How many seasons do you think he's had it? Uh, maybe two or three, probably one season. That's, that's not good. No. I how many I times do you think Bo Ryan did that? Cause I bet you it's like seven or eight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
I so I I think that the, he is on the hot seat. I've said that before. I think that the seat is warm. I think McIntosh is evaluating everything in this athletic department, and not, and and basketball will not be spared. I also think there's an element of the pressure that's around Greg Gard because I mean, look, you you listen to Locked On Badgers, you listen to this, you listen to other Badger shows, absorb all the content that you can. You're hearing the same discussion on all these shows. It's about Greg Gard and does he belong in this program and and. And is he out? The, the fan base is clearly split. I saw a poll on Twitter today that says like 70% right now our, our fans are saying fire guard. I mean, that's pretty that's pretty damning. I mean, when you have that many, a, a, por a portion of your fan base that basically wants him out, I mean, of course the seat is hot because I feel like in that situation, he has to look at it. Now, that being said, he did improve, right? So we were out of the tournament la last year. We are going to finish in a higher position this year in the conference. We already have more wins than we had. So we're going to, I, and I, and I absolutely, if we think, lose out, we'll have one more win. That's fair. But I, I look, I will say this. I absolutely think we are a lock for the NCAA tournament. I I've said this before. Probably I don't are. Know, like, it's going to be an ugly lock though. We're talking the, last four. That's in. fine. That's fine. But the committee clearly feels a certain way about Wisconsin based on the wins that we have the quad one numbers. If you look at the, if you look at all the numbers across the board, we're, our resume is clear. We're going to make the tournament. Um, and, but you're right. Like the seeding could be very, I mean, who knows Maybe we could fall down to a play in game. Potentially. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the lowest we get is a nine. They don't like putting major, like major conference teams in the play in game. They do. They will. They absolutely have. I mean, they, they absolutely well, they do. They normally split it. There's normally a game with two mid-majors and then a game with... Well, the mid-majors are going to be play for the 16s, but then like the 11-12s the, yeah. the are, are, are bigger teams at times. But so, yeah, I mean, I think there's that. We're going to get in. So if you look, if you're from, if you're sitting in McIntosh's shoes right now, we've improved. We're going to make the tournament. Um, we had a solid, you know, year as far as additions with stored Blackwell, we have free tech coming in next year. And of course we have the transfer portal. I mean, do you think there's any chance that Macintosh is sitting there thinking I'm, I'm perfectly fine with this. Like we're improving. There's really no reason to get rid of him. Or do you, I mean, like, do you feel like that's even fact? I don't think this gets viewed as a improvement because this is well below what we were doing previously. I, I always consider the floor under Bo Ryan 20 wins. And we are we, two we're we're on trip. We're, well, we're on we're gonna have back to back seasons of on less than twenty regular season wins. So we're getting to the point where we're getting far too comfortable with playing at this level. And it, this is where it drives me nuts when people are like, "Oh, we're fine. You know, this is okay. Well, we won the Big Ten in a couple of years. Okay. Well, even if you wanted to, if you want to use that argument, you want to go back to the Johnny Davis season. Guess what? He had a chance to win that title outright and lost to a bad Nebraska team because he couldn't get his team to play locked in for a game that you're playing for the Big Ten title. That that that's it was still a home that's game still, too, wasn't it? Off, yeah. Was it? I don't. No, remember. I think it. No, it was at it was at Nebraska. I don't think it was. A, I don't think it was a home game. But still, it was not a good Nebraska team, and you're playing for a Big Ten championship. Like you had everything to play for, and Nebraska had nothing to play for, and you rolled over and played dead. Mikey agrees with you saying this year is not an improvement. Mikey, I disagree. And I, the reason is because like we, we asked at the end of last year, we wanted guard to bring in a, an athletic wing. And he did that in AJ store. AJ store has brought more athleticism to the team. John Blackwell has been an addition and you return everybody else. I, I feel like we have improved because we were eight and one and we were number six in the country. Now I'm not saying we haven't fallen completely off the map. We have, but this team played pretty well at the beginning of the season and last year's team did not do that. I, I just, I do feel like we are an improved team. Now you could argue the degree of how, how improved we are and that's fine, but I do think that we're an improved team. Do you have a comment you want to get to? Yeah. David Thering, no, the game was at the Cole center. Justin, I remember being there. That makes okay. it more egregious to me. There you go. Because, because Nebraska is not a good away team and they haven't been for a long time. Like even this year, they're really good and they're still not a good road team. So I mean, it is what it is. He has a lot of games that he comes up and they play well, and he has a lot of games that you'd expect them to be really gamey for, and we're just not. Like, we have games we roll over, and you're like, what is this effort level? Why are we so bad defensively? Why do we not seem locked in? Why is the offense atrocious? Why can't we hit free throws? Like, some of that stuff has gone away this season, but there's a lot of things that that – him being a Bo Ryan acolyte that this team doesn't have that you look at and you're like, I don't get it. I, I don't understand why 
it's so different in terms of the product out there when this is somebody who coached under him for what 20 years like it seems almost like the standards just aren't the same yeah yeah i mean it's it's so i guess in the end i think that you know i, I i'm not saying that i'm totally out on guard because i'm not but i am getting closer for sure and i'm definitely moving in that direction and at the end of this season depending on how, how it finishes I may very well come on in our our sort of wrap up show for the season and say, yeah, I, I want him out. And I I don't I definitely I definitely did not think that was ever going to happen um, this year. I, I I would have absolutely you know bet my house on the fact that I was never going to say fire guard at the end of this season. But I I have been so disappointed in every in so many aspects of of the coaching and the lack of development and the lack of rotations and everything from, you know, not developing your bench enough to the where, to where you don't even have a bench right now. We, we have Blackwell coming in and that's about it. Nolan winter needs more minutes, you know, like you got to You got to develop these guys a little more. You've got to have them on the court to develop them. And, you know, you, we've had an issue with development over the last few years. We haven't seen the growth out of like, let, let's look at Crow in the Bo Ryan era. A guy like Crowell, I think, would have developed more. His post moves would have improved. There would have been so many things that changed, but we don't see that with with Bo Ryan. I mean, sorry, with with Greg Gard. And so I do feel like I am progressing in that direction. It sounds like you're there already, hundred percent. You're you're ready for. I, I don't see the upside with him. Yeah. To me, I want a coach that's capable of winning a title, even if even if the floor is a little bit lower, if the ceiling is higher, I'd rather take my chances on the ceiling. And I just think, from this standpoint. I know what guard is as a recruiter and I just don't trust him to strike gold and find his Kaminsky and be able to lock down a Decker and be able to find a Nigel Hayes type guy. Who's a a plus bench player who turns into an all conference player in his, his older years. I love Blackwell. I think he's a really good player. If the, he was on the 2015 team, he's what our third point guard probably. Like he's not playing on that team. He probably redshirted. He would have redshirted. Yeah, you're right about that. So I look at it and you're like, the talent acquisition just isn't there for us to get to where we want to go. And I I love free take. Like I think he has a potential to be an incredible player for us. But I look at this team and I'm like, I don't know if he makes the difference unless he is just transcendent as a as a freshman. Like he will help but I don't know how big of a difference it actually makes because I think there are problems with this roster, especially with the way guard coaches. He's not going to turn free tag loose and let him just go nuts, even if he is really good. So it gets complicated. Like you're, I mean, going, to, definitely you're going to not, restrict guys. He's definitely not going to be the guy like instantly, but yeah. it, the, the transfer portal is going to have to be really critical for him, by the way. Like we've talked about the need for another five. I mean, that's, that's about as clear as day after watching this game. Is it we got to have a rim protector. We got to have a guy. Like, I, I thought it was after leader. last year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I do, I still believe like, I still like Nolan winter. I still think he has a future here, but I want him to play more. I think he can develop, but he needs time on the floor. You can't give the guy two minutes. He played two minutes in this game. That's not I, good enough. I remember I mean, last year we were talking about this, and and Evan Flood from two four seven because I'm I'm a member of that board was saying that they're trying to get guys, and I'm I'm sitting there thinking I'm like this here and lies the problem. You have a head coach that's trying to bring these guys in, and nobody wants to play for. Them. Like he got store, which is commendable, and that's a great get. But the fact that you have you are struggling this heavily to bring in guys who can provide quality minutes for you in the portal at a school that has the history that Wisconsin has, and you see other teams bring in players, and you're like, how? How are they able to do this? And I realize NIL plays some aspect in that, but man, we make it look so hard to try and bring in players. And even some of the guys got like we have we brought in a top 100 kid yet? I don't know if I don't think we have. Have we? Well, did mm -hmm. I think uh, Gus was closest and he dropped out at the end of last year? Free tag was. I think he's dropped out of the top 100 now. I think he should be there. I think it's kind of ridiculous that he's not. But yeah, I, I don't know. Um, what you think. 
Mikey, uh, in response to our earlier question about whether we improved, he says, I don't know. Last year, wall injury derailed the season. That's very true. Didn't have that this year. I consider this year a bigger disappointment than last year. I disagree you agree with him. No. You disagree. I don't think wall was playing that great. If you look back at the statistics early in the season, how he was playing, a lot of people lean on the Kansas game. And even the Kansas game, I look at it, I'm like, this is a power forward that shot 40% in that game. He had, he was productive. He was great defensively, but he was not an efficient offensive player in that game. We, we played pretty well overall, but I don't think that wall was incredible to start. I think that he was definitely worse after he got hurt. Yeah. I mean, I, he's, he's definitely much better this year. I, I will he, flat out say he's been a lot better this year than what he was last year at any sure. point last year. All right, let's get bang on some comments here. We've got a lot of good stuff in here. I'm going to, I start a bunch of comments here. So John Burns says, oh, I already talked, I already get that one. Sorry. Um, Tyler Schubert says winter well, needs time good. in the weight room too. Yeah, there's Every no doubt about that. Every freshman center, unless they're just a freak show, is going to need that. Bo Dragon guard wouldn't even know what to do with Kaminsky and Decker. They would quit on him. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of discussion, by the way, in, in the in the comments about. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't find all the comments put up there where they were coming in pretty fast about the whole Bo Ryan Greg guard transition. Obviously, that is something that a lot of Badger fans weren't really comfortable with at the time. Obviously, Bo left midseason pretty much forcing Barry's hand to hire a great guard. And then great guard, obviously Bo Barry could have let him go after that. He kept him there. So I think that's there. Um, I've said many times about high floor. Tyler says high floor equals accepting mediocrity. I don't agree with that. Tyler. I think a high floor that's is what the ceiling thing is. to have in a program. I don't, I, I'm not, I don't think a high floor accepts mediocrity. I, mean, I think a high floor is a, is a, is someone that it's a, it's a launching point. you got to have that ceiling. I mean, um, it is a high floor. Right. Like, and, and so, I do think guard has, I mean, I think that floor is falling a little bit, by the way. He does have a high floor, but that's yeah, not there. He's, he's like 70 years old. I mean, he's been doing it for 30 years. He's You expect it to fade at some point. Um, Easton Parks, y'all got to talk some hockey sometime. Now, Easton, I think this is a good point. I want to bring this up because we are, I, Justin and I both have said we want to try to get, get talk more, more hockey. I do like hockey. I like, I'm an NHL guy. I don't really follow college hockey. But I have been watching what's what's happening with Hastings. I'm very impressed with everything that we're seeing from Wisconsin, and we will we will talk about it. More. Certainly after March Madness, this is done. the most wins that the program has had since ninety nine two thousand. Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, we we talked about volleyball a little bit during that season, and we will when once the when the tournament starts here. Um, obviously, hopefully, we can make a run of the Frozen Four. We will. So for for all you hockey fans out there, you want to talk about hockey. We're, we're going to commit to doing that, especially when the tournament starts. And and like we did with volleyball, I don't know how much we're going to get into it outside of that because I just frankly don't know enough about, um, like especially the college game. I, I do know about hockey. I do watch hockey, but I, I'm a big Golden Knights fan out here. But thanks for the comment, Easton. I think it's it's fair and we definitely need to do that. Tyler says, Tyler's having good comments today. The successor usually never lives up to the predecessor. Bielema never won a Rose Bowl and guard has never gotten past the Sweet 16. Yeah, that's fair. Zach Bartz. Honestly, I don't think we win another game. Well, I mean, you and Justin are on that. Justin said one and four, and he's he might be right about that. I mean, that's <laughs> that's really, really, really sad. What did you think? What did, what did you say it was going to be? I said three and two. Three? I said I said three and two. I was wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out, Justin. That's nice. No that's problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else, Justin, on Greg Gard? Any last thoughts on the basketball team before we move on to talk a little football here at the end? Not really. I mean, this is this this horse has been dead. Like it's it's turned into beef jerky at this point. It's been beaten so much. Um, we're to the point where it's 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 kind of put up or shut up. I I legitimately think if we're being honest here, McIntosh has to look at this and be like, "Listen, your trend stinks, and this team looks like it's dead. Like we gave you, we expected you to bounce back from last year, and you really haven't." And you do have a more talented team. So at some point, I have to look at it that it's you. Um, I'm not giddy. I don't want to see this team lose. I just also. This, this is a good comment. David says, Justin over here being giddy about his correct one and four prediction. That's funny, David. I, I'm not giddy about it. I want us to be better than what we are. I just don't. I don't like having a, a coach that I don't think has it win games that are meaningless. And him winning at this point would be meaningless other than prolonging the inevitable, which is, I think eventually we end up firing him because I just don't think he's going to be, he's not going to excel enough. So at this point I look at it and I'm like, do we really want to have a couple more seasons where he does just enough to hold on to his job? 
because all that does is make you hate your team. Like how many times do we watch the NBA teams that are the eighth seed and they're like, we're never going to win a title. We're not going to make the personnel moves that we need in order to make the team better to move up. And we're not good enough or, or we're not bad enough where we can get really good players in the draft. We're kind of that with when it comes to Wisconsin basketball right now. We're not a complete train wreck, so we're not going to fire our coach. But we're not good enough where we look at it and we're like, this is a team that can go out there and if they, they can go toe-to-toe with a top team. And that's the million-dollar question right there is – Obviously, what we don't know is what's in McIntosh's head right now. That's the million-dollar question. Like, is he okay with what he's seeing, or is he kind of siding with now a majority of fans that are looking for him to be out? I think this comment from Bo Dragon is pretty funny. I love Wisconsin, but in order for us to get what I want, I have to root for guard to lose. Sorry. (laughs) I mean... It's just a rough time right now. All right, so let's move past um, Greg Gard a little bit. To end the show, we're going to talk a little bit about a former Badger, Isaac Garendo. If you didn't see the combine stuff, Isaac let's, Garendo. Let's, hold, let's slow your roll here real quick. We got the the amazing Canadian waterfall, Tanner Bordellini, running a 4.9440 and putting up <laughs> one of the best uh, athletic scores for, I think he set the record for a center. The previous yeah. one was uh, uh, what's his name's brother, center for the Eagles. Why can I not think of his name? Kelsey. Kelsey. Kelsey had the record for a center, and now it's Bordellini. Yeah. So, and he's by the way, I was going record, to I bring up Bordellini after Grendo, but yes, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people out there. I, 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 I think we need he, we oh, he gets top billing. All right. I agree. I agree. I want. I was really impressed with Grendo though, and I know Grendo is a, is a Louisville guy, but whatever. Garendo, 4340. And some incredible numbers, by the way. Garendo, do you think vertical, Garendo, wasn't it? Like 42 and a half? 42.7, I thought. Maybe I could be wrong about that. Do you think um, Garendo can be a solid pro? Athletically, yes. I need to see the vision from him and patience. It, it, we didn't really do him any favors here. Like, I don't think we he got the chance to develop the way he should have at Wisconsin. And I think that that hampered him. If he had another year under his belt in college where he got an opportunity to be the guy, I think probably yes. It's going to come down to does a team give him the opportunity to really prove it. So I, I I worry that he's going to get the reps at the NFL level to be able to find out if he can be a guy. The tools are there. Like the kid's got absolute jets. Yeah. I love this comment. I actually was going to say something similar to this, but not with this comparison. Good, good on this one for Bo Dragon. Garendo could be a sneaky James White type in the NFL. Like that's getting in. He's got to get in space, right? If Garendo gets in space, not necessarily quite like James White, but I definitely feel yeah. like he can absolutely have a good career because he's just so fast. He's got the physical tools. You're right about vision. Yeah. Certainly, there's an issue there. I don't think he's going to be a, like a a star running back like Jonathan Taylor. I think he's going yeah. to be. A utility guy using in space screen passes, you know, bubble screens out to the to to the receivers. Like something in that ilk, I think, is where he can shine. Special teams, perhaps, but I just feel like he could be a good pro. I don't see him as a starting, you know, lining up, taking the majority of the of the, of the back of the, of the running back carries for a team. But I'll I do push think back on that just because we've seen so many guys like what you did in college doesn't matter in the NFL for a run. Agreed. Agreed. We see so many guys come from like division, like low division one that end up becoming studs in the NFL. And I, so I don't want to write off Garendo because athletically we look at it and see this and it's like, dang, like he's, he's got everything you want athletically. If the vision clicks for him, I think he can be a starting back in the NFL. He's going to take some work. He's definitely raw. I mean, the injuries have set him back. The fact that he's still got all the athleticism that he has is telling. And it will be really interesting to see if he could stay healthy while he's in the NFL. But if the vision clicks, he's got a chance to be one of those guys because you just don't have guys with that kind of speed at running back. Like we've seen what it's what's up with Taylor. He hit the gap and he's gone. I don't know that the vision is really NFL quality though. I don't, and I, I, I would agree with that. Like, like he doesn't have, he that. doesn't have JT's ability to see the holes. Like he just, I don't think he has but that. JT, but, I mean, that's, that's tough. Cause JT's probably right. the number one back in the NFL when he's healthy. I mean, plus he plays for my Indianapolis Colts. Love it. Well, um, you're going to need him because that quarterback, man, 
Hey, listen, we don't know Anthony Richardson. We don't know. He, he can't stay healthy. But if he could stay healthy, we don't know. But I, I will say when a guy has a 50 something percent completion percentage in college, Demarcus like Ruffin Anthony Richardson did, um, I'm not very happy about it. <laughs> Um, it was so David Thering uh, said it was a three cone record. Um, okay, for for him, yeah, I know he set the record. Still, four four was like the third fastest or something like that too for us. I mean, listen, I don't think Bordellini plays center in 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 league. I think he'll play I don't guard. Think he should if you if well, you use the name correctly. I mean, I think, college, I will guarantee that an NFL offensive coordinator is like, you got to put some RPMs on that. Or you got to yeah, go. I mean, the snap has got to be better. But look, look Bordellini. Bordellini, his best position was guard. He was at center because we basically needed to be him at center. I don't and think if he had, for if Renfro was healthy the whole time and if he would have played, I think Bordellini would have absolutely been a guard. I think Bordellini will be a guard in the league and I think he's going to have a great, I, look, I said what we talked about last week, we talked about our, you know, our like our, like our line and whether or not we liked him better a lot than this year. I think that was on Locked On maybe, but I, Bordellini being off our line will affect us. Like he was a really good pass blocker. He was a really good run blocker. He was good. I think it absolutely will be, um, you know, in good shape. Uh, David Therry has a good question here. Question for Justin Rajiv: Draft outlook for Braylon Allen. Justin, what are your thoughts on Braylon? I, well, um, I guess I need yeah. to to clarify that. Do are we asking where we think he'll get drafted? Or are we asking what does he turn into? Oh, well, let's let's go with the draft. Let's just okay. talk about the draft. Like, where I, do you? If think I had he gets to take drafted? a guess on him, it being a weak year, I'm going to say third round. If I had to take a guess on a strong running back year, I'd say fourth. Yeah, I mean, I would say fourth round probably is what I'm thinking. His numbers were not um, great at the combine. Um, I don't have Other them in front lifting, of me. Bench press, he yeah. did 26 reps. Right. If anyone has his, um, what was his 40 time? Do you know what his 40 time was? He didn't run. He didn't run. Okay, yeah. So I, I think, yeah. look, I think Braylon Allen is going to definitely have a shot at the league. A hundred percent. Like, and he, you know, if he can stay healthy, I think he can be effective in in in, in the NFL. Um, obviously, I, I wish him all the best. But I, I would say, yeah, like day two. Like he's a day two kind of guy for me. I feel like maybe fourth round. I think that's that's probably where where I see him. And Bo, Bo Dragons is Braylon to the Steelers. Yeah, probably Steelers are like a Wisconsin. Uh, there's, like, there's Wisconsin guys in the draft. Yeah, sign us up. Hey. They they like consistency. They know consistency, and they they do it. Um, and Easton, last question here. Easton says, "Does Garendo go over BA?" Well, when you get the numbers that Garendo just put up in the combine, uh, yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I, I really don't know There's enough. Gonna be about, a, they're going like, to really break down his film. I would say probably yeah. no, because I think I don't love Braylon's vision either. Like I have legitimate questions about whether he can see things well enough at the NFL level to be a guy that's a plus guy. Um, Garendo is not to that level. And that makes me wonder if somebody will take a risk on him or if they fall in love with the measurables. He's got, see, there's some Mike Mamula there where you may look at it and be like, oh, we took him in the second round. And then he gets on a team and you're like, this guy's not going to work. And I'm not, right. that's no slight to Garendo. It's just, there's, if you have somebody that you're bringing in that you're hoping to be a stud for you, you want to see the production on the college level. And yeah. he just doesn't have that. Well, that'll do for our show today, guys. Thank you for joining us. Um, we still don't have information on the spring game. We don't know what's going to happen there, um, when that's going to be. But if it is, uh, hopefully we will be there and we'll talk more about that as that gets closer. Spring ball is around the corner. We're very excited about football. Justin said before the show started, he's really, really ready to move on to football and be over this basketball stuff. So I'm, I'm there. I'm right there with you. Thursday, uh, we play Rutgers on Thursday this week, 6 p.m. Central Time, and then we play in uh, Purdue on Sunday to close out the regular season. I do think we go one and one. I think Justin thinks we go zero and two, but I think we, uh, I think we win. I think we beat Rutgers, but we'll see. Any final thoughts, Justin, before we close the show? Uh, well, Tyler Streber saying Aaron Jones of the fifth round pick. Rondo could have a similar path. Aaron Jones is excellent at running between the tackles. I, I'd be shocked to see that with Garendo. I think I would, I don't know what his college film looks like, but that would be, I think that might be a reach. I think there was some things there that he showed. He's probably gotten a little quicker in the pros. Um, other than that, I, you know, I just look at it and hopefully we finish out well, but I just don't see it at this point. This team just does not seem to have it. We can't play consistent enough for a long enough period of time. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. I like anything can happen in March. Anything can happen in March. I want to just get there. I want to see what the draw is, see what the seeds are. Like, you never know. Maybe we can sneak our way into the Sweet 16. I don't know. I'm not saying it's likely because it definitely doesn't look like definitely it be at sneaking. all. 
<laughs> but I just I would love to just have something to cheer for at the end. Um, if you're with us, if you've watched us the whole time, thank you so much. By the way, those of you there's there's a lot of you guys still in the show watching. Thank you so much. We appreciate all of the of the you know the support that we've gotten since we started the bucket report. So thank you very much. And with that, we'll see you next week on Wisconsin. I'm Wisconsin. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Bucky Report or The Bucky Report Podcast from wherever you get your content. Until next time, on Wisconsin.